and welcome to my backyard. <laughs> Today I'm going to show you how I take curling willow cuttings from the local Trader Joe's florist section and turn them into trees that you can see here in my mom's backyard. There are two. These trees took only about six years to get as big as shown here in the photo of my mom's old backyard and I'll touch more on those details as we go. First, I use the willows as house decor in an extra large mason jar while they rooted in the water. I change the water out every four to five days or so, so you kind of keep an eye on that and change it as needed. Once the roots were a big pretty mess in the jar, I took out some saved nursery pots, basic potting soil, and stuck them in the pots. I usually put some wood chips at the bottom or some rocks or something of these extra plastic nursery pots. Uh, to keep the soil running out the drainage holes. I find those drainage holes to be really big and the dirt will just run out once you water it. So make sure you kind of block, don't entirely block it so it doesn't drain, but put something in there so your dirt doesn't run out the holes. I put the stronger willow starts alone in pots and paired up the smaller willow starts just because I only had so many pots. Keep the hose nearby so you can wet the dirt as you go. It tends to pack down a bit with water, so you may find that you need to add a bit more soil after you put water in. Make sure you get the root starts completely buried, but it's okay if you get a bit higher on the stem than the root started. Just make sure you get all the roots in there. You don't want to pack it down too tight, but enough to keep the saplings upright. So just firm enough to hold your new saplings so they don't grow at a angle as they grow a larger root ball. I've read you can just plant these rooted stems directly in moist ground, but <laughs> I live in an urban area with a lot of raccoons and those lovely darlings will just rift these right up looking for grubs without a stronger root system in place. So you do what works for you. As I pot these, I trimmed off the dry parts and cut them down to a length that would encourage more root growth and less length to the branches. I want them to be stout when I plant them in the ground. Again, I'm looking for like a sturdy plant to plant probably next spring. I'll give them a few months to develop a root ball and for the raccoons to maybe, I don't know, lay off a bit. <laughs> They're pretty active this year. So as I finish up this part and laugh at my cats that insist that they're helping me, let's talk about curling willow. Like I said, they grow really quickly. Those six to seven foot trees in my mom's yard were only about six years old or so. And keep in mind that as they grow, they kind of bend back over. So if they were straightened out, they would probably be even taller than they look. Uh, if you keep up on trimming them, you can keep them relatively small and more of an architectural feature in your yard. They are willows and as such will tend to arch back over to the ground. But if you let them go, they will get much larger. I was reading they can get between 25 and 35 feet. I don't know if it's all willow trees, including these curling willows, but I've never let them get that big. So just kind of keep that in mind. If you have experience with like fruit trees in your yards or sidewalk planting strip trees, it's a similar experience in keeping them at a more petite size, but they can get overgrown if neglected. Uh, I've seen apple trees larger than three-story houses that have been so neglected. So, you know, kind of keep that in mind. Um, on the maintenance issue, you probably have to trim them every other year or so. But the bonus perk is that you'll always have lovely curling willows to cut for flower arrangements or to make new trees from and give to friends. <laughs> Another important thing to point out is that I live in the Pacific Northwest, which is a growing zone 8B, I think is what it's called. Um, the curling willow does prefer coastal and southern states. What does that mean? Uh, that means I guess if you're in a northern Midwest state, for example, it might get too cold and just freeze and die. Uh, it's always a good idea to check with your local garden center on your growing zone and local pests that might cause you headaches. You never know if it's considered an invasive species or if it'll just get eaten by a local beetle or something until you check with the locals that know. Um, I remember when my mom moved from Pennsylvania to Oregon and um, in Pennsylvania, a uh, morning glory is an annual. And here on the West Coast, people planted it and it's became this noxious weed that's impossible to remove. So again, check with your locals and make sure that you're not creating a nightmare for yourself or putting in all this work for something that's just going to die. Um, they are pretty hardy where I live, but again, the United States is a big country or, you know, you might be in Australia for all I know. It might be different for you. 
So that said, if you're all in the clear, in the growing zone, in the pest, and noxious weeds and all that, you can get yourself a mini grove of curling willows for less than five bucks and some dirt. It's pretty good. My mom gets the credit for the original discovery. She's pretty amazing. I have a six foot lemon tree. She started from seed. I generally need more death proof ways of starting plants than that. <laughs> Another kind of free cheap thing we're starting on. I'll have to share some photos on the Instagrams, but uh, we, you know, those, those expensive yogurts and uh, pudding pots that come in these like cute stoneware pots and those pastel colors or the glass pots. And you're like, why would I spend $5 on the pudding or the yogurt? But I really want it because it's cute. So we even bought a couple of those. I'd say we have about a half a dozen, maybe maybe we're getting close to 10. And we just took succulent cuttings and planted in those for teacher gifts. And so by Christmas or teacher appreciation day, they should be nice and full and ready to go. They're fairly low maintenance. So I'm letting my tween age daughter do this as her project, kind of take care of them. They're hard to kill because you, you can forget to water them for a good month. They're succulents. Just clipped off some jade and some hens and chicks and kind of just stuck them in cactus soil and just put a splash of water in it once a month and they will be good to go. Cheap and easy as well, which is my way to go, right? <laughs> so anyway, thanks for stopping by uh, my weird little projects. I hope you enjoy them. What are you supposed to say? Smash that subscribe and like button or comment if you have, I don't know, some other suggestions for cheap and easy plants that are hard to kill. <laughs> thanks for stopping by. Bye.